let's start by talking about units. Whenever you measure something, either accurately or by estimating, it's really important to use appropriate units. What you want is a unit that gives a nice manageable number. Let's have a look at a few examples. Take this pie. I'd measure its weight in grams, unless it was a really big pie, then kilograms might be better. Now strictly speaking, it's mass rather than weight that's being measured. But they're just the same for everyday things like this pie, so we can use either term. Okay, I'd measure the diameter, that's this length here, in centimetres. So say it was 10 centimetres, that would be much more sensible than saying 100 millimetres. Okay, here's an elephant. Now, I'd measure his weight, or mass, in tonnes, unless maybe I needed to be more accurate. For example, if I'm comparing his weight with the weight of his friend here, they're both about 8 tonnes, but it's easy to compare them in kilograms. That's a difference of 60 kilograms. Back to the first elephant. I'd measure his height and length in metres, because they're both going to measure several metres. Whee! Oh, now look, a pagoda's appeared. I'd measure the height of this pagoda in metres, because even though it's a lot taller than the elephant, the next unit up is kilometres, and it's much smaller than one kilometre. OK, just one more. What about the distance from London to Paris? Well, that's about 340 kilometres. I definitely wouldn't say it's 340,000 metres, or 34 million centimetres. As well as using appropriate units, you need to choose an appropriate degree of accuracy for the numbers. The more accurate you want the measurement to be, the more significant figures you need. For estimates, one or two significant figures should usually be enough, because the number's only approximate anyway. Right then, time to estimate. I need to estimate the height of this giraffe, but I've also been given this man here. So the first thing to do is to estimate the height of the man, which is a much easier task because we know more about the heights of people than strange looking giraffes. So a good typical height to use is two meters. Now we can compare the man with the giraffe. So let's mark the height of the giraffe and see how many of the men we need to stack to get that height. So that's one, two, 2.5. So it's about two and a half men. Of course, when you're doing this on paper, you don't need to draw the man each time, just put a mark where the top of his head would go, like this. 1, 2, 2.5. So now we can estimate the height of the giraffe as 2.5 times 2, which is 5 metres. As well as heights, you can estimate areas. We want to estimate the area of this splodge. The first step is to draw a rectangle that's roughly the same size as the splodge because dealing with a rectangle will be much easier than dealing with the splodge. So, if I make it this length and this width, I get this rectangle. Next, calculate the area of the rectangle. So that's length times width, which is 26 times 13 equals 338. Now, since this is only an estimate, I'm going to round this to two significant figures, which gives me an answer of 340 meters squared. Or, if I didn't have a calculator, I'd round the side measurements first to 30 metres and 10 metres, and that would give me 30 times 10, which is 300 metres squared. And remember, the units are squared because it's an area. Now, wherever height and area go, you can be sure that volume will follow. Estimating volume is a lot like estimating area except this time I need to draw a cuboid instead of a rectangle to approximate the volume. So I could draw a cuboid with a base of sides 5.2 centimetres and a height of 12.7 centimetres. However, the top of the bottle goes in a bit and it's a cylinder, so I'll make the cuboid a bit shorter and narrower to allow for that. Here it is. This is all very approximate, so I've chosen easy numbers to calculate with. Now I just calculate the volume of the cuboid, so that's length times width times height, which is 4 times 4 times 10, and that equals 160. So my estimate for the volume of the bottle is 160 centimetres cubed. And remember, the units are cubed because it's a volume. 
So, in summary, for measurements, you need to use appropriate units and an appropriate degree of accuracy. To estimate the height of something, compare it to the height of something you know. To estimate the area of a shape, draw a rectangle that has roughly the same area as the shape and find its area. You can round the numbers if you need to. And to estimate the volume of an object, draw a cuboid that has roughly the same volume as the object and find its volume. Again, round the numbers if you need to. So that's it. The end.